Does Dick Sean clean his acumen at least once a year? <laughs> Has Dorothy Lyman ever found a hoodoo hiding in her garage? <laughs> if Richard Maul acted avuncular, would a lady slap his face? <laughs> we'll find out the answer to these questions and a lot more as we play television's funniest new game show, Wordplay. And here's your host, that man of many words, Tom Kennedy. Hello there, thank you very much. Good to be with you once again, and it's always good to be back home here at NBC. What a great show we have for you. A game of fascinating words and funny definitions and lots of cash. You've met our panel over here, Dick, Sean, Dorothy, Richard. Dick, your hair looks a little different. What is that? I'm doing a movie. Oh. And they insisted I dye my hair. I see. The part was a 28-year-old Polish mechanic. And I got the part. Terrific, Dick. Thank you very much. We'll Thanks. look forward to hearing from you a little bit later on. Let's go over now and meet our contestants. First of all, we have Claudia Tynan. Tell us about yourself, Claudia. Well, I'm from Anaheim. Uh -huh. I'm married, and I have three children. All right. And Jamie Harrison? I am from San Gabriel. I'm a new mother. I have a three-month-old son at home named Joseph. Good. We welcome you both, and we wish you the very best of luck. Let's play our game. Here's how we play our game. One board is made up of nine words, all found in the dictionary. And the contestants, you will alternate choosing words. Each celebrity will give you a definition. Choose the one celebrity with the correct definition, and the money behind that word will be added to your score. However, if you're wrong, your opponent will get a chance at it. Now, later in the game, certain words will be worth extra money. I'll explain that when we get to it. We will play Six words. The player with the most money keeps the money, and he goes on to our speed word round worth $5,000. Thank you. And now let's take a look at today's words. They are cudgel, turgid, erudite, acumen, avuncular, fantasia, gibbet, hoodoo, and germane. And one of those words is a bonus word. The player who gets that word will have a chance to win a trip to... Is that right, Tahiti? Can I believe my own eyes? Terrific. All right, let's show our home audience today's bonus word. Now, before the show, Claudia, since it's our very first show, we had a toss of the coin. You won that toss. You're the first to pick a word, and so which word would you like? I'm going to start out with Fantasia. All right. Right off the bat, she hit the bonus word. Do you believe that? And now you have a chance to win a trip to Tahiti. So listen carefully to our celebrities, because if you choose the right definition, you not only increase your score, or at least start it out, you'll be on your way to Tahiti for, uh, which word was it? Fantasia. We go over to the lovely, fantastic Dick Sean. Thank you. Uh -huh. Fantasia is obviously a medley of familiar tunes. You see them on television at night when they offer those records, like 100 records sent to Atlanta, whatever. It'd be like, <laughs> but it comes up with weird combinations of songs and, and artists. Ah. The other day, I heard Pavarotti singing, Just around the corner, that's where I buy my fish. <laughs> I buy my fish just around the corner. Show us, in, in summation, what you had just said. He a said medley. a medley of familiar tunes. Dorothy Lyman, Fantasia. Fantasia means an imaginary friend. Children have them all the time. There's a, a movie about a man who had an imaginary friend of a great big furry rabbit. And let's see, Topper had the Kirbys. And Johnny Carson had Joan Rivers. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> an imaginary yes. friend. Imaginary <laughs> friend. <laughs> Richard Maul. Okay. okay. Fantasia means excitement. TV evangelists have a lot of fantasia. They get some poor schlep who hasn't spoken in 30 years. They drag him up on the stage, and they go, you are healed. What's the first thing the guy says? Wow, I could have had a V8. <laughs> Excitement. Excitement. All right, Claudia Fantasia now. For the bonus prize, this is the trip to Tahiti. If you're right, you've got the trip. Is Fantasia a medley of familiar tunes? Imaginary friend or excitement? Answer. Oh, you know, I want to win this trip, and uh -huh. I, I, I'm debating between two. I'm uh -huh. going to go with Medley of Familiar Tunes. Does she go to Tahiti? Is it Medley of Familiar Tunes? Oh! It is, and you're on your way to Tahiti. Charlie O'Donnell, tell her about it. 
But Claudia, you and the guests will spend six nights and seven days in exotic Tahiti. It's a dream vacation for two as you and the guests fly from Los Angeles to Fable Tahiti on UTA French Airlines. Enjoy the sun, sand, and calm lagoons of Papa Ete at the Hotel Tahara, a first-class resort located on its own wave-washed sandy beach. Furnished by UTA French Airlines and the Hotel Tahara, worth $3,335. Claudia, what a way to start off. Congratulations to you. And the game is gone. Now let's go over to the board and see what the money amount is behind Fantasia. What is it? It is $50, and that starts you off. She's on the board. Now, Jamie, a while ago, I told you that well, there was a chance to win extra cash. Now, if you pick a word and win it, and it happens to be connected to a word value like $50, I mean a, a cash value like $50, and right at this moment there are one, two, three words so connected, you will not only win the money behind your word, but you'll win the $50 as well. Now, having said that, which word would you like next, Jamie? I'm going to go for a connection. I'm going to go for turgid. Turgid, she says, and turgid she gets. Dorothy Lyman, turgid. Well, turgid is a noun, and it means pickpocket. Hmm. You imagine a pickpocket in, oh, let's say, a nudist colony. He wouldn't get a lot of dough, but he'd have a lot of fond memories. The um, pickpocket is the Pick definition pocket. of turgid. Thank you, Dorothy. Richard Mall. Turgid means abrasive, like the top of my head, actually. <laughs> Feels like sandpaper up there. So, but anyway, uh, I used to be turgid, so I took a course on how to win friends and influence people. Uh -huh. And then to meet people, I became an insurance salesman. <laughs> I was a likable guy, but nobody could stand me. <laughs> so, Richard... <laughs> In conclusion, uh, yes, are you trying to get me to wrap this up? Is that what you're Abrasive. Abrasive. Thank you very much. Dick, John. Who's it obvious? It means pompous. Oh. It means uh, overblown, as if Pavarotti was sucking on helium. <laughs> I'm not sure about this one. All right. <laughs> the others I knew I was right. I see. But well, I don't want to lose uh, in, make in a In summation, what is turgid? Turgid, of course, is the thing that I pull out. <laughs> pompous is what he says. All right. Jamie, Jamie, <laughs> oh, is, turg is turgid pompous, pickpocket, or abrasive? What do you think? I'm going to have to say it's abrasive. Is it abrasive? No, it is not. It's a break now for Claudia because we come back to her. She only has two definitions left, pompous or pickpocket. Which one is it, do you think, Claudia? Pompous. She says she thinks turgid is pompous. Is she right? And she is right. We should have known. We should have known, Dick. We go back over to the board. Turgid tells us that behind it there is $25, and that is connected to 50. So we add 75 to your score for a grand total of $125. Claudia's in the lead, but the game is never with yet. We're going to get to round two, and we'll raise the money values behind those words right after these words for you. You also got the chip. And as promised, we have raised the dollar values behind the words here in round two. Uh, Claudia is our leader so far. I don't want to be turgid about this, but I want to remind you that if you win a word that is connected to dollar values, you not only win the money behind your word, but those dollar values as well. All those connections. Claudia, are you ready? Yes. All right. Avuncular. She says avuncular, and that indeed is one of those words that is connecting. And we go now to Mr. Mall. Richard, please. Avuncular means like an uncle. Uh huh. I had an aunt who was avuncular. <laughs> you had an aunt? You should have seen the hair on this woman's arms. But anyway, I don't want to talk about it. Okay, so here we go. Like an uncle. Like an uncle. Dick? Avuncular uh -huh. means premature. Ah. My great grandfather was very avuncular. Yeah, he was born prematurely, married at 16. Forced into an early retirement, and at the age of 45, he was put in the grave. Unfortunately, he lived to be 90. <laughs> Sad case. But I will pull out my card. Yes, okay. Which tell tells you us it's about. premature. It means premature, yes. like gray, which uh, I used to be. Gotcha. Dorothy Lyman. These guys are so full of it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you on it? 
Avuncular, avuncular means See. unrefined. Now we all know people who are unrefined. They're the sort of person you like to send to a finishing school. I knew a girl once who you wanted to send to refinishing school. <laughs> this girl came back as a dining room table. <laughs> Unrefined okay. is the definition of a On this show, we don't say fully. We just say they're turgid. You can see the rest of it. All right, now we go over here to Claudia. And avuncular is the word. Do you think it means premature, unrefined, or like an uncle? What do you think, Claudia? I don't have a clue. Oh, okay, I'm going then we'll just go. move right. What? I'm going to go with Dorothy. You're unrefined. Unrefined. Is that the right definition? <laughs> no, it is not. Jamie. Hey, oh. Jamie. Now, there are two left. Premature or like an uncle? Premature. Premature. Is on, that Dick. the correct definition of a uncle? No, it is not. And believe it or not, it's like an uncle. I don't know about the aunt he referred to, but it was like an uncle. That, that results, that avuncular, since it was not one, results in a block. And that will go up on the board. And now we go over to you, Jamie, for the next pick of the word. And so which word would you like to pick, please? If I can pronounce it, cudgel? It's cudgel, cudgel or cudgel. If you say cudgel, it's cudgel. It's cudgel. It is connected, of course, to two different money amounts, and we're going to start with Dick. I'm thinking. No. It, a cudgel is an affectionate gesture. Ah. Van Gogh. Most men send flowers to a girl they love, but not yeah. Van Gogh. No? He sent his ear. <gasps> she wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> so she looked at him next time and went like this. <laughs> then he sent her diamonds. He sent her diamonds, and then everything worked out cudgelly. I see. Cudgelly. Cudgelly. So I say that it is an affectionate gesture. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. And very well said, too, Dick. Yes, Dorothy? Cudgel is a short, heavy club, not to be confused with a short and heavy club, which is Weight Watchers for Midgets. <laughs> Cudgel. Short, heavy club. Good. Thank you very much, Richard Mark. A cudgel is a man's girdle. <laughs> It's very popular in the entertainment industry. In fact, it's very popular in West Hollywood, but we won't go into that right now. Anyway, uh, one of the music industry's best-kept secrets is that Prince is actually Raymond Burr in a men's girdle. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're something else. Man's girdle. Man's girdle. First you had an aunt like an uncle, now you got an uncle like an aunt. You're something else. All right. It's up to you, though, Jamie. Which one do you think is right? Affectionate gesture? Uh, short, heavy club, or man's girdle for cudgel. Answer? They're very convincing. I'll go with short, heavy club. Go with She Dorothy. says cudgel is a short, heavy club. Is she right? Yes. Jamie, you're right. Let's see what the money amount is behind cudgel. $100. And that $100 connects to $75. Added to, uh, opening up your score with a grand total of $175. What a tight contest if you're both on the board. Yes, indeed. Time now for a break. When we come back, we'll play our final two words, and we'll raise the money amounts behind those words, and we'll have many more laughs with our delightful panel right after this. Welcome back. We're ready now for our final two words. We've increased the money amounts behind our words, and uh, there are three dollar amounts up there and two connected words to those dollar amounts. Claudia, you're up next. Which word would you like next? I'm going to go for hoodoo. Now, for hoodoo. Dorothy, we come to you do. Well, now, this is a word which I learned when I came to California. It is the mating call of an owl, and there's a big owl that lives in a tree behind my house. When you hear them say, hoodoo, hoodoo, that's what they're saying. I want to mate, I want to mate. <laughs> and then the woman answers, hooda, hooda, which means I want to mate too. But occasionally you'll hear her say, hoo which means, oh, that's all right. That happens to a lot of owls. <laughs> <laughs> mating call of an owl. Owls mating, hoodoo, hoodoo, listen to Hoodoo is bad luck, baby. It's easy to tell the difference between good luck and bad luck. Good luck is a horseshoe. Bad luck is cement shoes. <laughs> I said it's bad luck, baby. Well, I got you, pal. All right, that's bad. Bad, he says. It, it's, a, it's a home remedy. That, too. That's hard to say. There's so many M's in there. A home remedy. My mother used to use uh, hoodoos. She used to use food for hoodoos. Hmm. And uh, I remember getting a black eye once. I was sleeping up in my room. She brought me a raw steak with butter and put it in my eyes. I couldn't see. And I said, who do that? <laughs> What's going on? 
Hoodoo. 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 Claudia, what is hoodoo? Do you think it's uh, the de correct definition is home remedy, owl's mating call, or bad luck? Gosh. <laughs> I don't, I'm going to go with bad luck. Is it bad luck? It is bad luck. But that's good luck for you, Claudia, because who has behind it $100, and it is connected to $175 for a grand total of, it is $400, Claudia. Dramatic things happen when you connect words with those dollar amounts as you just saw. And the same can happen for you, Jamie. We have lots of money up there on that board, and of course, you need this, don't you? Yes, you I need do. It badly. Stay in it. All right, now there are one, two, three words that connect. And of course, you can pick any word you want, <laughs> but which one would you like? I'm going to go with Germain. Germain, she says, which indeed connects to the remaining money amounts on the board. And for Germain, we go over to Mr. Richard Mall. Germain uh, means appropriate. It's also the name of one of the Jackson brothers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we won't talk about that. Okay, now a certain behavior is not germane in certain occasions. Never start a food fight at the White House. It's not nice. Besides, politicians don't look good with egg on their faces. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. For what? I don't know. <laughs> so oh, they love you. <laughs> they love you out there. Appropriate. <laughs> Germain means to cling to uh, German culture, but other oh. cultures can be germane also. Uh, how many times have you gone to a restaurant like Garcia's of Wiener Schnitzels <laughs> or Lam Fang Yang's Matzo Balls? There's got to be a better ending somewhere. <laughs> anyway, the result of it all <laughs> is that it's a uh, one of those. Oh, I see. It's pertaining to German culture. German culture, oh. which is very refined. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Dorothy. Germain means daring, and um, I, we tape Mama's family right next to uh, give me a break, and I'll tell you an example of germane or daring behavior would be to try to take an eclair away from Nell Carter. Ah, <laughs> that would be daring. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jamie. The word is germane. Do you think it means pertaining to German culture or daring or appropriate? Now, of course, you do need this, this don't you? Station. Because you have 175, right. I, your opponent has $400. Now, uh, there's enough money in connections to make you a winner. Okay. Which of these definitions do you think is the right one? I'm going to go with appropriate. She says that germane means appropriate, and is she right? And she is right, and that means you win the game. Congratulations, I'm The money behind Jermaine, let's take a look at that, happens to have been $300. And of course, that was connected to $275. So we had $575 to that score for a total of $750. And that makes you the champ. Boy, what an exciting thing. Well, Claudia, we had to say goodbye, but you won that beautiful trip to Tahiti. We congratulate you. Thank you for playing our game. And we have for you the trip to Tahiti plus some nice parting gifts, okay? Thank you so much. All right. Jamie, come on over here. Ladies and gentlemen, here is our very first champ on wordplay. Jamie, congratulations. Thank you. And when we come back, you not only have the money you've already earned, but you're going to get a chance at $5,000 in our speed word round, and we wish you the very best of luck. We'll see how she does right after this. Thank you, Charlie. Jamie Harrison has just won $750. She has a chance now at $5,000 in our speed word round, and here is the object of our game, to get from one side of that board to the other by connecting boxes. Now, hidden behind each box are two definitions of a single word. For example, if you went to box number seven and you saw up there a uh, beer cup, person's face, then you know they both define mug. So you would get that. Then you go on to box number eight, and it says... Uh, uh, men's neckwear, an equal score. And you say, Tom, I think it's tie. I say, yes, you're right. So you see, if you guess the word, the box is yours. However, if you are incorrect, for instance, if you went to number nine and you saw touch gently and beer faucet and you did not know that that word was tap, then that box turns into a block and you have to go around the block to get across the board. All boxes going across the board must be connected side by side. We're going to start that clock at 45 seconds and we wish you nothing but luck. We'll start the clock as soon as you pick the first box. Seven. All right. Third month, soldiers walk. 
March, eight. Go. Wait for the bell. English dollar. Pound, weight nine. Measurement. A topical tree, hand surface. Palm, ten. A wait for the bell. Temperature, measurement, college diploma. Uh, degree, eleven. Go. Electrical string, send telegram. A uh, message, um, Western Union, uh... You can... Um, mail, letter. Electrical string. Electrical you can go around. Uh, pass, four. Speak wildly, great review. Speak wildly. Um, speak wildly, speak. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and everybody wanted to help you because that it was really, it's, sometimes if they don't occur to you, that was wire, I think, on the oh. But I tell you what, we'll come back and find out what the blocks are and add up her winnings right after this. Send the wire. Go to that speed word round and see what those blocks were. Number 11, as we just mentioned, was wire, send telegram wire. And number four, which we did not have a chance to resolve, was speak wildly, great review. That was rave, right. but you did get four of them right. $100 a piece for 400 bucks. Added to 750 gives you a total of $1,150. Jamie, you're coming back tomorrow, and we're adding to our speed word round $2,500 for a grand total of $7,500. See you not tomorrow, folks. Bye-bye. Come back and see us, won't you? Let's go over here. Take Today's runner-up on wordplay will receive Nico's elegant and versatile dinnerware for formal dining or everyday use. Microwave and dishwasher safe furnished by Nico. Some member of our studio audience today will receive a service merchandise gift certificate, famous name brand items. Select from our 500-page catalog or redeem at one of our stores furnished by service merchandise. Stay tuned for...